Hello and welcome to the program. Now, kidnapping is nothing new in Nigeria, but the current spate of kidnappings in the country at the moment is quite unprecedented and is fast becoming one of the biggest security challenges in the country. In fact, hardly does a day passes by without reports of kidnappings from different parts of the country. Majority of the cases now occur in the north of Nigeria. A recent crime report released by the Acting Inspector General of Police shows that between January and April this year, at least 685 persons were kidnapped across the country. Now, that's for officially documented cases. Quite a number of these kidnappings are sometimes unreported. So it gives you a clear idea of how serious this is. The IGP, of course, said 546 of the national total were recorded in the three northern geopolitical zones. The Northwest leads with 365 cases of kidnapping. It is followed by the North Central Geopolitical Zone, where 145 persons were kidnapped. Zamfara State, in the Northwest of the country, has the highest national kidnap rate, with 281 victims within the period. Now, if you break that down, it means at least two persons were kidnapped in that state every day between January and April this year. Of course, the situation has been directly linked to the activities of bandits in the state. So we could as well describe Zamfara as the kidnapping capital of Nigeria. And that, of course, is not a good one. 65 persons were reportedly kidnapped in Kogi and 51 in Niger State, both in the North Central. Now, these criminals do not only target foreign nationals, but even ordinary Nigerians, as we saw with the recent case in Zamfara State, where two caterers and their three children were kidnapped during an attack on Government Girls Secondary School in the state. The kidnappers have also extended their reach to President Buhari's hometown in Dara Katsina State, that's in the northwest, uh, of course, and the victim this time was Musa Umar, who is not just the district head of the town, but also the father-in-law to the president's ADC. And there are so many other cases, uh, so many other cases, I should say. A good example the chairman of the Universal Basic Education Commission, UBEC, and his daughter, who were taking along uh, the Kaduna Abuja Highway recently. So, the Nigerian Senate has already passed the confirmant bill, which seeks to prescribe punishment for the offenses of abduction, wrong wrongful rest restraint, and, of course, uh, wrongful confirmant for ransom. With the passage of the bill, whoever with intent to hold any person for ransom abducts or wrongfully restrains or wrongfully confines such a person shall be punished on conviction with imprisonment without an option of fine. Also, whoever is guilty of the offense which resulted in the death of the victim shall be punished and on conviction be sentenced to death. Now, how do we nip this in the board before it gets out of hand? And that is if it is actually not getting out of hand. Joining me from Abuja now is security consultant Chris Agbambu. Chris, thank you very much for joining us on the program. Are, yeah. are, are we di we, isn't this getting out of hand? The spate of kidnapping, kidnappings now we're having, quite unprecedented. Yes, it is, uh, it is getting, it is out of hand already. Not, not just not getting out of hand, it's already out of hand. And it calls for serious attention by all, all, not just the security agencies, but all Nigerians to take, take charge of the situation we have at hand right now. Now, the, 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 you, you look at Zamfara State, no doubt, the kidnapping capital of the country. It, it was not like this in the past. How did it get this bad in Zamfara? Yeah, um, Dej, if you remember, I think the last interview we did, I, I pointed out that uh, what is happening in the Northwest currently, um, where they call them bandits, these are not bandits, these are terrorists. Um, I, I remember that I, I did say that um, with the success of um, the Nigerian army uh, in the North, Northeast, where Boko Haram has been dismantled, I must say for sure that uh, the potency of Boko Haram in the Northeast is being taken care of. Uh, they, ca they can't form any much of a problem over there. So uh, the remnant of uh, these Boko Haram people has shifted towards the Northwest. Uh, we started talking about this as, um, as early as uh, August last year um, because um, 
we we foresee that some of them we foresaw that some of them who escaped who were able to survive the on onslaught of the Nigerian uh, army, uh, the Nigerian military and Nigerian army, are uh, relocating. Uh, and so they were going towards the northwest, and which we raised the alarm that we expected the civil police, they're uh, talking about the Department of State Security Services, the Nigerian Police uh, Force, uh, the Nigerian Security and Civil Defense Corps, to go in and take charge of this situation before it gets out of hand. Sadly, at preparation for the general election seems to be more important, preoccupying the security agencies as a then. So uh, they didn't take uh, listen or take action on our warnings. Uh, unfortunately, this is where we are now. Um, you remember very clearly that um, uh, the Boko Haram got affiliated to ISIS and, and they formed the uh, ISWAP, uh, the Islamic State in West African province, and they were given the mandate to, to claim, to take, take control of that, the territory on or before the 30th, 30th of the January 2019. Uh, if not, uh, they, would draw, they would withdraw their support, ISIS would withdraw their support. He, unfortunately, they were not able to meet the deadline, so the army defeated them. So uh, now they are looking for how to fund their operations. They are looking for how to continue their ons onslaught against the state, against the Nigerian so, state. So, so, so uh, let, let, me, let me get this straight. I mean, you, you've just said that, look, what is happening in Zamfara, of course, not, not by bandits, but by, you know, Boko Haram members who probably have um, actually moved away from, from my degree. And I mean, I mean, from the northeast of the country coming down uh, to, to the northwest now. Is it yes. that... These kidnappings happening, if, if they are actually being perpetrated by uh, Boko Haram members, is it that they are trying to raise money to continue to fund the insurgency? 100 percent. That is what they are doing. They are trying to raise funds, and that is why they are doing kidnap uh, for ransom uh, currently. Uh, so they want to raise money and continue the action because the support they were getting from ISIS had uh, gone down, and so... Um, they need money at any means possible, and that is what they are doing right now. Um, uh, the information will gather that those who kidnapped um, uh, the district head, Alaj uh, uh, Musa Umar, who came in uh, military uniform, like they said, and this, this exactly is how the Boko Haram uh, team dresses. And so it's very, very clear that what is happening in the Northwest and they're getting down to uh, Kaduna and even part of the, uh, the Abuja Kaduna Highway is perpetrated by these uh, Boko Haram elements. Do, do, do you think they were trying to send a message by going after uh, that district head who incidentally is the father-in-law to the ADC of, uh, I mean, the, the president's ADC? Yes and no. Um, yes, because uh, of course it's, it's, it's a big fish. Um, remember that in, in that same uh, Katsina, um, a man, one of the religious leaders, whom some people have uh, uh, said was a prayer warrior for Mr. President, was, a, was also a kidnapped some time ago. Um, yes, they're trying to say, listen, uh, we can do, we can, if we can get to the president, we can get to those that are around him and uh, send a message. Uh, yes, also that um, they believe that these are high-end uh, personalities. These are people that um, uh, the state would, if uh, the stake is high in terms of uh, maybe payment of ransom, um, but it may not actually turn out to be so because like in the case of the, the religious leader that was, uh, that was adopted, it, it turned out that uh, uh, no, uh, no ransom was paid. So this one is something that they feel that um, the president and uh, all those around him may uh, take action quickly to make payment. Because um, run down to his kidnap, uh, information is that uh, he, he was being monitored because um, he had a, a pattern that after the Madrid prayers, he would sit in front of his house waiting for the Isha prayers uh, before retiring into the compound. Uh, so they must have been monitoring him and uh, planned their action and 
they succeeded. Now, Patrick, um, th th this problem is here with us. The yeah. police, of course, has launched uh, Operation Puff Ada, but uh, even with, with that launch of Operation Puff Ada, kidnapping is still going on. I mean, <laughs> we're seeing kidnapping even along that Abuja Kaduna Expressway that the police um, said it was going to focus on. W what exactly do you think we need to do that we're not doing at the moment to address uh, this, this um, situation? Because as you said, it, it's, it's gone out of hand. And we can't afford to withdraw our soldiers from the battlefronts uh, against Boko Haram and bring them to begin to fight uh, kidnapping. That, that, is a, that is a strategy that they, uh, the elements, the Haram elements, they, are, they want. They, they would want to see that the Nigerian military would draw their personnel from the northeast uh, towards um, uh, the northwest so that uh, that flank can be open and uh, they will continue with their attack. Uh, so uh, it will be very, very um, unprofessional. It will, it, will be, it will be more costly to the country if they do so. Um, Again, having in mind that we have uh, lean resources, and uh, both human and capital resources, uh, to be able to cover all the flanks effectively. So the communities are, are very, very needed in this regard to provide information. But some of all these communities are, are not being cowed. Uh, they are being afraid to give information. So that is the major problem, especially in the area, in the Aziz of Kaduna, uh, Aziz, where they have been terrorized. So most of them are afraid to give information because of a repressor. But um, before we got here, I think the major problem about uh, our security situation is that we seem to be more reactive than being proactive. Um, we should have um, taken measures, uh, anticipated that things like this, it's likely going to happen. Um, terrorism don't just uh, fizzle out. You don't just win it by, by military might alone. There are lots of um, um, actions that you need to put in, both civil actions and all that, uh, intelligence and uh, even getting the people to support the security agencies. That's uh, uh, we didn't see as such uh, happening uh, before, we got, before we got where we are now. So now what we should be doing is really uh, the flank of the Zamfara because like uh, you rightly said, uh, it has, has become the, the headquarters of kidnapping. It's a headquarters of kidnapping because that flank bordering Niger is still very, very, very porous and it's easier. Um, the information we also gathered from this uh, recent uh, prominent uh, kidnap is that uh, these people headed uh, towards uh, Niger also. Uh, so there is need to effectively man our borders, especially all those flanks. Uh, the the in Ministry of Internal Affairs must, as a matter of urgency, try to find out how best to be able to do this. Um, the, military, well, but, but the good thing yes. is that it, it was recently announced that um, Nigeria would be using technology now to uh, basically man its borders, to, to monitor the borders. So we, we, we don't have the details, but let's just hope that works. Maybe that would be able to help. Yeah, um, using technology, I'm, I'm happy about it. But before we can effectively deploy technology, there are the basic things we need to do. Those communities, those border areas, are they, are they, do they have electricity? Uh, do we have those, those uh, surveillance equipment that uh, will run on batteries? And how long are they connected to solar system? From the information we have, none of this is, is been done yet. So how effectively do, we, do they have night? Uh, night vision aid. It's possible for this surveillance equipment to capture things that are happening at night in the dark areas. Uh, the question, as we speak right now, is not is 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 no. So the answer to that is no for now. So um, really, we still depend on the physical manning of our of our of our border lines and the communities. Again, when you see a man from Niger Republic and a man from the periphery of Zamfara and uh, Katsina area, you may not, there may not be much of a difference. And you see there are a lot of intermarriages, a lot of uh, communal living between both ends. So it's a little bit difficult. It's, it's, and uh, the ECOWAS protocol of free movement of person, persons and goods is also one that has not helped uh, the matter very effectively. So, a lot of things in that border areas need to, that's why I said that the Ministry of Internal Affairs must interior, must sit down and look for a better way to protect our country because that flank has been open and is creating problems for us. 
the Nigerian Air Force have, have uh, deployed a lot of fighter uh, aircraft uh, to uh, attack the forest lines and all that, where we still have some innocent Nigerians uh, living there. But they, if they do that, these people are still hibernating within the communities and easily cross to the, uh, the other country and come back to attack. So a lot still needs to be done, and it has to be done urgently. All right. Patrick Agbambu, thank you very much for joining us on the program. Thank you very much. All right. We'll take a short break, and uh, when we come back, We'll continue the discussion on the security situation in the country. Don't go away. On DG360, we don't just ask the questions. What is wrong with amending the constitution the way uh, the, the National Assembly members have been doing it? We seek answers. Constitution is constituent. Our problem is not um, lack of laws. Our problem is lack of the willpower to implement our laws. Answers that provide clarity. While we negotiate, we should try to make it a point that the girls must be complete. The clarity you need okay. to make informed judgment quite... so that you can make the right decision and take action. People are saying it is you politicians that are responsible for this, that you are the reason why oh. this is happening. All these dollars that call themselves governors in this country? I wish we had people like Tony at the National Assembly. God forbid that I go to join that uh, family today. DG360. Providing clarity to issues.